Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for this session of Spokane Public Schools Keep Learning series. Today's lesson is for third graders and anyone else who would like to join. If you haven't seen our previous lessons, that's okay. You can still tune in today. My name is Sharon Withrow and I am an instructional coach at Bemis Elementary School in Spokane Public Schools. I get to be your teacher today and I'm so excited that you are joining me. Today, we will be learning about summarizing a fiction text. For today's lesson, you will need a paper and a writing tool. Readers, our goal today is to retell and summarize stories that we have read. You have been retelling stories for a long time. When you retell a story, you start at the beginning and you tell almost every detail until you get to the end. Our goal today is to be more specific. We are going to summarize the story. What does that mean to write a summary? A summary is when we tell what happened in the story using only the most important details. How are we going to do that? I have a special strategy to share with you. It's called somebody wanted, but so then. These words are clues for us for what to pay attention to in the story to get down to the most important things that happen. Let's talk about each one a little more closely. Somebody is referring to the characters. This is where we ask ourselves, who is the main character? Once we know that, we can go on. Wanted. This time we'll ask ourselves, what is the main thing that he or she wants? But makes us stop and slow down and think a little bit. What are the problems or obstacles that the character might face trying to get the thing that he or she wants. So, so is what the character does in response to the problem. And finally, then. Then is, how does it all end up? How does the problem get resolved? Using these words and thinking about the questions that go along with them, help us to dig deep in the story and find those most important details to include in a summary. As we read our story today, I will be stopping along the way to show how we find some of these pieces. Reader, your job today is to listen through the beginning of the lesson. When we get to the end, I'll show you how to do your work and what your task is. Here's the story we're going to read today. The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman written by Darcy Pattison, illustrated by Joe Cepeda. May 10th, Red Crest, California. Dear Uncle Ray, please come to visit us this summer. We will go camping, we can swim and catch fish. You are my favorite uncle. Please say you will come. Love, Tamika. XOXOXO. Readers, those symbols mean hugs and kisses. May 17th, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Dear Tamika, I'd love to come to California, but I can't. I will be building kitchen cabinets for some new apartments all summer. But maybe my friend Oliver will come to visit. Love, Uncle Ray. Readers, we've already found some of our most important information. First of all, somebody. Who is the most important character in the story? What are you thinking? You're right, it's Tamika. Tamika is the main character in this story. We've also learned what Tamika wanted. What was it that Tamika wanted? You're right, Tamika wanted Uncle Ray to come visit her. But we've already discovered the problem as well. But Uncle Ray had to work all summer building cabinets and could not come to see Tamika. 
Dear Traveler, I am going to see Tamika Schwartz, 370 Park Avenue, Redcrest, California, 95569. Please give me a ride and help me get there. If you don't mind, drop a note to my friend Raymond Johnson, 111 Stony Lane, Rock Hill, South Carolina, 29730. He wants to keep up with my travels. Thanks. Oliver K. Woodman. You can see Oliver on the right holding a sign in his lap that says, California or bust. June 1st, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Dear favorite niece, Tamika, Oliver left this morning. Let me know when he gets there. It should take him a couple of weeks or maybe more. It's hard to say. Love, Uncle Ray. Readers, let's look at how they're trying to solve the problem. We know that Tamika wanted Uncle Ray to visit, but he couldn't come. So, Uncle Ray built Oliver out of wood and sent him on a journey to Tamika. June 8th, Forest City, Arkansas. Hi, Mr. OK is OK. Quinn and Sherry went to a basketball game at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee last weekend and brought Mr. OK back. He hung out with us for a couple days and all the girls liked him better than Quinn. So when Quinn's cousin's boyfriend's aunt was leaving to visit her sick grandfather in Fort Smith, Arkansas, the guys loaded Mr. OK into the aunt's station wagon and sent him on his way. We didn't even get to say goodbye. Cherry, Sherry's sister for the gang. P.S. If you see Mr. OK again, tell him we all said goodbye. June 11th, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hey Ray, I drive a moving van for the Southeast Moving Company. I picked up Oliver at the Arkansas border, then drove west to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma, south to Dallas, Texas, northwest to Amarillo, Texas, east to Panhandle, Texas, then west again to Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's an easy fella to travel with. He never needs bathroom stops. He doesn't care what we eat, and he stays awake with me all night. I'm sorry to see him go, but this week the company is sending me east to Wyatula, Florida. Trucking along, Bobby Joe. June 28th, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Dear Tamika, I've had no word from Oliver in 17 days. I'm starting to worry. What if he is lost? Please call me if he turns up at your house. Love, Uncle Ray. July 1st, Redcrest, California. Dear Uncle Ray, no word from Oliver. Are you sure he's really coming? I still wish we could see you. I asked Mama if we could come visit, but she said it costs too much. Daddy says he can't take off work that long. Ever since I asked, Mama keeps looking at family photo albums. When she sees your pictures, she says, my baby brother. Love to me. July 4th, Salt Lake City, Utah. Dear Raymond Johnson, my grandfather found Mr. Woodman in the middle of the reservation in New Mexico. Poor fella, a mouse was building a nest in his backpack. We don't know how he ended up way out there and he's not telling. Grandpa brought him to Utah to join me in the 4th of July parade. I got so tired of smiling and waving at the crowds but Mr. Woodman's brave smile inspired me. I just sent Mr. Woodman off with three sisters. They looked like such nice old ladies, so I know they'll take good care of him. With all my love, Melissa So, Miss Utah. P.S. I've enclosed an autographed picture. July 27th, en route to San Francisco, California. Dear Mr. Johnson, my sisters and I had the distinct pleasure of entertaining Mr. Oliver K. Woodman for the past 23 days. You see, we've lived in Kokomo, Indiana all our lives, 
until now, we'd never been west of the Mississippi River. Our dear Papa died in January and left us an inheritance. We decided to use the money to tour the West this year. While in Salt Lake City, we saw Mr. Oliver in a parade, and after talking it over, we voted to give him a ride. We stopped at a rodeo in Eureka, Nevada, where Mr. Oliver met an old friend named Bert. They had a moving reunion. We are heading south to San Francisco to see the Golden Gate Bridge. So we left Mr. Oliver yesterday in Rough and Ready, California. He should be at Miss Tamika's soon. The Claremont sisters, Agnes, Maggie, and Lucinda. P.S. We had afternoon tea every day. Mr. Oliver has the loveliest manners. July 28th to Raymond Johnson, R.E., Mr. Oliver K. Woodman. Our family, currently on vacation, picked up the above-named person in what I thought was a misguided goodwill gesture. Little did I know how lucky that gesture would be. Last night, we pitched tents in the Redwood Forest. I woke at 3 a.m. to screams of terror. Bears! Your friend managed to frighten them away. He saved our lives. With the deepest and most sincere gratitude, we intend to deliver him to the doorstep of Tamika Schwartz within the next two days. Gratefully yours, Bernard Grape, Attorney at Law. August 1st, Red Crest, California. Dear Uncle Ray, guess who came to dinner? Oliver! He is so much fun. We are camping in the backyard tonight. I hear he's not scared of anything, so I'm glad he'll be there. Tomorrow at the river, I'll let him hold my fishing pole while I swim. Guess what else? Daddy and Mama talked it over, and we're coming to your house next month, and we'll bring Oliver home. Isn't it wonderful? Love, Tamika. XOXOXOX. P.S. Knock, knock. Who's there? Olive. Olive who? Olive both you and Oliver. Rock Hill City News, September 15th. Ticker Tape Parade for Hometown Boy by Demetrius Dixon. Oliver K. Woodman will return home today amid national acclaim for his cross-country journey. Woodman began his trip on June 1st in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and arrived in Red Crest, California on August 1st. The Rock Hill City Council announced that a ticker tape parade to honor Woodman would be held today at 10 a.m., starting at the corner of Main Street and Cherry Road and proceeding down Cherry Road to Cherry Park. Raymond Johnson and Tamika Schwartz, friends of Mr. Woodman, will host a picnic in his honor at Cherry Park at noon. At 1 p.m., Mr. Woodman will show his postcards and mementos from his trip. The public is invited. Readers, we've come to the end of our story, so now we know how the problem was resolved. Then, what happened after Oliver's journey? Then, Oliver finally made it to Tamika's house, and her family was able to visit Uncle Ray and bring Oliver back to him. This solved Tamika's problem because the whole time her main goal was to see Uncle Ray. That is what she wanted. Readers, now that we've reached the end of our text, we're going to use our strategies and the notes that we took to help us write a summary of the story. First of all, let's think about what we learned so far. Somebody was talking about the characters. We learned that Tamika is the main character of the story. Did you see how I highlighted that? As we go through each of these, I'll be highlighting the key word. Then we talked about what Tamika wanted. Tamika wanted Uncle Ray to come visit. The problem in the story is where we get to the but. Uncle Ray could not come visit because he had to work all summer building cabinets. Remember readers, this is the way that the characters try to solve the problem.
Uncle Ray built Oliver and sent him on a journey to Tamika. I highlighted Uncle Ray built Oliver, sent him to Tamika. Those are the key words I want to remember. Finally, we want to know how the story ended. How did the problem get resolved? Then Oliver got to Tamika's house and her family was able to visit Uncle Ray and bring Oliver back. Readers, I'm going to take these highlighted words and add a few more in to write a summary of the text. To do that, we're going to start back at the beginning with somebody. If we take those first three words, somebody, wanted, and but, and add in our information, we can write a sentence to start our summary. Here's what I mean. Tabika wanted Uncle Ray to come visit, but he had to work and could not come. Let's go on with the so. So he built Oliver out of wood and sent him to Tamika. Oliver had many adventures along the way. That sentence, Oliver had many adventures along the way, is what I used to summarize all the things that happened to Oliver on the journey. Remember, in a summary, we can't tell everything. We have to choose the most important. Finally, we get to the end of the story, the then. Then, two months later, Oliver made it to Tamika's house. And later, she was able to visit Uncle Ray and return Oliver to him. By using this strategy, we were able to find the most important parts of the story to share in our summary. Readers, now is when I want you to grab that piece of paper I talked about at the beginning of our lesson. Your job this week is to practice this strategy on your own. <laughs> All I need you to do is write these words on your paper. You can draw lines if you'd like to separate out the sections, but you don't have to. At the top, I wrote summary of. This is where I would put the title of the story. Then I wrote our words, somebody wanted, but so then. Once you have these words written down, I would like you to go find a story you would like to read or revisit one you've read before. When you're done reading, think about each of these words to write a clear and concise summary of the story. Readers, we've come to the end of our time together. I want you to remember our goal for today. Readers can retell and summarize stories they have read. We really focused on summary. Remember, a summary is only telling the most important parts of the story. Using our strategy, somebody wanted, but, so, and then, helps us to focus our thinking around the most important parts. As you're reading stories, keep these in mind and it will help you to better understand what you're reading. I have enjoyed doing some literacy learning with you today. Thank you for joining me as we keep learning from home. I look forward to seeing you again for our next lesson on KSPS. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.